I hope that people see self-advocacy as a movement and not a program. It's a part of our life, not something that you just go to and learn how to do. It's about our human rights and it's about speaking up for what we believe in and making a difference for people with disabilities all over the world. And so when we talk about the self-advocacy movement, I'm hoping that people with and without disabilities understand that this is a place to strengthen people's lives and help them fulfill the dreams that they want to happen in their life. We've done a lot to have people understand who we are and what we can do for ourselves and how we can work with others to advance our civil rights and the movement. But I think now in the, this century, they're trying to change our focus from advocating for ourselves and talking about to our civil rights to have us go backwards and saying what we can't do for ourselves and you know how we need you know others and technology to advance our movement. And I think that we have to work together with all of the agencies and parents and teachers to show that we have moved forward to be able to do some of the things that we know how to do and we can run our own organizations. I think that there's a lot of parts of self-determination that people don't know about. There are different levels, and I hope that there is training and different things that help people learn about self-determination in a better way. Because there's some people out there that don't even know what self-determination is or what it means and how it can make a difference in their life. There are other people that know a little bit about self-determination and need more help experiencing and taking leadership roles and learning and teaching others around self-determination. And then there's other self-determination that self-advocates have a self-determined life and they need to be out there sharing their skills and advice with other self-advocates around the world to teach them about self-determination and about the importance of that and how that can make a difference in the world that we live in today. And I think for self-determination, it has changed. I think people are moving away from talking about the individual and what the individual needs are to a system of, well, how does that, how does that fit under managed care? Um, and if you look at the language, managed care is confusing because the language doesn't fit what, you know, the services for the individual are. You know, how are you gonna get the things that you need for your housing, transportation, all of those things? How does that fit with the language of, you know, the medical model, you know, talking about uh, coordinated care and, you know, some of those things. And I think that, you know, people are pushing the idea of self-directed, which is, you know, some of the things that you need for your life, more so than, you know, what it is that you had under self-determination. So I think that, to me, there's a confusion between the two because they're trying to fit uh, self-directed things into a model for uh, Medicaid. And in some cases, people are losing some of the freedoms that they had before. We have to sit down and let people know that we are the same people that we were in the past. We have the same needs. We haven't changed. It's that the system has changed and the people around us have changed and they want to change us to fit what they're talking about now. So I think that it's important to know that we're the same individuals that we just need to use technology and some of the things that we have today to help us do things and live better lives and be stronger people.
when you're talking about how to help people learn about either self-advocacy or self-determination. It's really important different ways to do that. Some people learn better by pictures. Some people can't read. But thinking outside of the box, coming up with creative ways to help that people understand what they're talking about so they can really participate and make a difference when you're asking people what do they think that the future of advocacy or self-determination should be. What we should focus on in the next 10 years for both of those things is coming up with ways to provide a structure where um, people in the self-advocacy movement don't have to rely on grants um, only to fund um, the movement to make it happen because a lot of times what groups are, are working on is just working on grants to provide to exist and they don't even have time to work on all the other things that they need to be concentrating on as um, what the important things that are happening out there for people with disabilities that they need to be a part of and at the table to speak up and be a part of. And when you have to learn how to only rely on grants and money, sometimes self-advocacy groups fold because they don't have those resources and different ways to learn how to do fundraisers, to learn how to write to corporations and private foundations to get that money so that they can do the things that they need to do to make the movement move forward. And I think for self-determination, I think that again, what I said before, people need to learn about self-determination, have more opportunities to experience that and play leadership roles with that. And it also should be taught by self-advocates because who better knows what we want in our life than us ourselves. And teaching that peer-to-peer -peer support is really a good opportunity for us to learn from each other and to expand and grow with each other and to make the movement stronger.